This topic is obviously a hot topic amongst all of us who have job titles like IT business analyst or IT analyst. I just read an article on medium.com recently written by a member of our professional tribe who was describing uh, a presentation by a fellow ITBA. And that presenter painted a pretty bleak picture of the future of our profession. His vision was a future in which we're all replaced by super smart and super social AI. Well, I beg to differ. As a disclaimer, I have been involved with artificial intelligence since the 1980s. Of course, what we thought back then was AI were applications called expert systems. They were designed to help normal people get expert advice from computers. It turns out the only caveat was that normal people needed experts to tell them what questions to ask and how to understand the answers. We actually used to joke that we were really creating artificial ignorance. That way we could still use the acronym AI. That kind of soured me on AI and started me on the path to business analysis. Based on my years of experience talking, I'd like to make sure that we share an understanding of what I'm talking about. And given the evolution of many of these technologies, there's considerable debate online about what is what. I'll start by defining data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Once we're clear on that, I'll propose some potential impacts on those of you who analyze and improve how organizations leverage IT for competitive advantage. Now, the terms data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence are often referenced in connection with digital transformation. So what's digital transformation? That's a question I hear nobody asking. <laughs> kind of normal because we've each been exposed to the term and we're afraid to ask what the other person understood under it. After all, we are ITBA, so obviously we're expected to know what digital transformation is. Sometimes we forget that our superpower as ITBAs is to ask simple questions that provoke profound answers. Answering the question is someone else's job. One of the answers that I'm partial to comes from the CIO magazine, US edition in June of 2021. And I'd like to quote, digital transformation marks a rethinking of how an organization uses technology, people, and processes in the pursuit of new business models and new revenue streams, driven by changes in customer expectations around products and services. That answer actually gives me hope that we might have something to contribute to the discussion. After all, it implies change. And that's something that we ITBAs live and breathe. It focuses on the change on technology, people, and processes. Those are all toys we've been playing with our entire professional lives. So what differentiates digital transformation from the change initiatives we worked on in the past? Well, when we drill down on the definition, it turns out that digital transformation is based on big data. That's where data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence all merge. Now, big data, of course, is what you get when you collect all available data sources of digitally available information on a specific topic or person. Big data combines everything on your corporate computers with cell phone data, social media interactions, e-commerce sites, surveys, even your internet searches, anything related to the topic of choice. I'd like to share a true story to illustrate the power of big data. I lived in Florida for many years. Florida is known for sunshine, white beaches, and hurricanes. There's hardly a year that goes by when Florida is not threatened by one or more hurricanes. The good thing about hurricanes is you always get advance warning before they hit. That means you have time to prepare. When you move to Florida, you actually get a list of items you need to survive a hurricane. Now, Walmart, who was the provider of all things essential until uh, Amazon invented this pandemic, needed to know which items to stock up on so they could provide the essentials for hurricane preparedness. They stocked their shells based primarily on those lists. In testing their infantile big data applications, Walmart let the computer confirm that those lists matched what people were actually buying to prepare for a pending disaster. The application delved into their piles of consumer data and identified two items for which demand peaked tremendously as soon as a hurricane was a possible threat. Those two items were beer and Pop-Tarts, and neither were on any list. But that knowledge allowed Walmart to make a killing. It also proved the power of big data and data analytics. Now, in a nutshell, data analytics is about sorting and filtering masses of data 
to try to find anything new or different. As an ITBA, you're probably asking, what is the difference between analysis and analytics? Well, analysis is a broad general concept for examining information to extract actionable intelligence. Analytics is a specific reference to the systematic examination of data for the same purpose. Analytics really feeds analysis data. And there are four pillars to data analytics. The first pillar is to determine what you want to know about what. Spoiler alert, <clears throat> that might sound familiar to the ITBA's ear. Someone needs to define which fish you're going to try to catch out of the, in the data lake. So for starters, looks to me like you still have a job, at least up to this point. This is called descriptive analytics, which simply answers the question, what happened? This is da the data-backed answer to the as-is we used to talk about. So sales of beer and Pop-Tarts increased in September. They have identified that as a fact. That's descriptive analytics. Once you know what to fish for, someone needs to research and confirm that those fish exist. After all, it would be a waste of time to try to fish the whole lake for a fish that can't be caught there. The second pillar is the diagnostic analytics, which correlates the descriptive results with other data in order to try to answer why did that happen. That answer requires drill down, data discovery, data mining, and more. Well, let's see, September is a peak hurricane uh, season. That's also a fact related to why we sold more beer and pop tarts in September. Now, given that you caught enough fish, you can apply statistical analysis and other science based approaches to the data to sort out the good fish and ignore the rest. Remember, your data lake is huge, and there are many fish in there that don't interest you even a little bit. If you've established reliable diagnostic data, then you can move to the third pillar, which is predictive analytics, for hints to probable future events. Now, like any prognosis, those results are uh, possibilities or probabilities, and the likelihood that they'll actually happen depends on the quality of the information and the stability of the circumstances. Next hurricane season will happen, and people will probably need more beer and Pop-Tarts. It's highly probable. The final step in data analytics is to verify the data, clean it up, and make it uh, presentable for analysis. So the pillar four is called prescriptive analytics, which uses predictions to plan future actions to avoid problems or take advantage of probable trends. Of course, this is gambling on the validity of the predictions, but it's gambling with a house edge. We need to stockpile more beer and Pop-Tarts during hurricane season. That's an assertive action we're going to take. Data scientists use artificial intelligent technologies like machine learning. So let's demystify machine learning. Uh, according to the 1959 definition by Arthur Samuel, who is an American pioneer in the field of AI, machine learning is programming a digital computer to behave in a way which, if done by humans or animals, would be described as involving the process of learning. So artificial intelligence is really about developing systems that mimic human intelligence. Learning is just one component of human intelligence. AI itself is a tremendously broad field. It has a ton of subfields. It's actually divided into two main categories. Weak AI, also known as, artific also known as artificial narrow intelligence, or ANI, covers a lot of applications that focus on solving a single problem, like facial recognition. Strong AI, or Artificial General Intelligence, AGI, hasn't been achieved yet. It's really the theoretical ability of an intelligent computer to understand, learn, and perform any intellectual task that a human being can. But like I said, that has not yet been achieved. Actually, the list of what qualifies as ANI technology reads like a what's what in futuristic marketing lingo. It includes facial recognition, like I mentioned, visual recognition, text recognition, robotics, expert systems, machine learning, deep learning, cognitive intelligence, natural language processing, natural language understanding, chatbots, speech recognition, text-to-speech, and who knows what other disciplines have evolved since I started this sentence. Before we can consider 
how evolving technology will impact IT business analysis. Finally, we need to understand what exactly IT business analysis is. Now, the International Institute of Business Analysis, the IIBA, was founded in 2003 to define the field of business analysis. And according to them, business analysis is the practice of enabling change in an organizational context by defining needs and recommending solutions that deliver value to stakeholders. There is, however, one tiny caveat. That impressive sounding organization defines business analysis, but we're dealing with IT business analysis. So what's the difference? Their definition of business analysis rightfully encompasses anyone implementing change of any kind in an organization. If we go back to the web for more information, the website businessanalysisexperts.com defines business analysis for IT as the business process of assessing an organization's structure, processes, technology, and capabilities to identify and define solutions to roadblocks that impede the achievement of organizational goals. Now, that definition does require a disclaimer. It is my company's website. We even offer a free knowledge nugget, by the way, an overview of business analysis for information technology. If you can't explain that to other people, tell them to watch that video. It's, it's available on YouTube. Now, our definition of BA for IT includes the magic word technology to justify the IT dimension of the field. That implies a working knowledge of IT is necessary to work as an IT business analyst, or ITBA as we call uh, practitioners of this profession. In other words, you need to know what IT can do for an organization to be a legitimate ITBA.